An inguinal hernia. What now? This short video explains what an inguinal hernia is and what can be done about it. First, we illustrate the anatomy of the groin and how an inguinal or femoral hernia occurs. Then we explain the main surgical options. This model shows the abdominal wall at the level of the right groin in a man. The skin and subcutaneous adipose tissue were removed in order to clearly distinguish the deeper structures. These are the various muscle layers and the peritoneum. The peritoneum surrounds the intestines. In the groin in men, the inguinal canal forms a naturally tubular opening in the muscle layers to allow the spermatic cord to pass through. In the spermatic cord, run the blood vessels to and from the testicle and the vas deferens. The inner opening of the inguinal canal, in yellow, is located a little more to the side of the body. The inguinal canal then runs diagonally through the muscles of the abdominal wall to the outer opening of the inguinal canal in orange. This is located more towards the middle. The outer opening is a defect in the most superficial muscle in the groin. From here, the spermatic cord continues to the testicle. In women there is also an inguinal canal in which a kind of suspension cord, the round ligament, runs to the uterus. In both men and women, there is another opening in the abdominal wall, slightly lower in the groin. This is the femoral canal, here in turquoise. Next to it, the major blood vessels run from in the abdomen to the leg. An inguinal hernia results from a weakening of the abdominal wall in the groin. Most inguinal hernias result from a weakening at the inner opening of the inguinal canal. Here you can see this from the backside. This weakening creates a bulge of the peritoneum. This is the so-called hernia sac. This hernia sac follows the inguinal canal to exit beyond the outer opening of the inguinal canal. In medical terms, this is called an indirect inguinal hernia. When supine, the sac is empty, but when squeezing and standing, the intestines can sag into it and the sac becomes full. We recognize this filled hernia sac as a swelling in the groin. There is also a second type, the direct inguinal hernia. In this case, the weakening does not occur at the inner opening of the inguinal canal, but a little more towards the middle, indicated here in green. Also, this bulge will lead to swelling at the outer opening of the inguinal canal. Both indirect and direct inguinal hernias can also occur together. A femoral hernia, on the other hand, occurs in case of a weakening somewhat lower in the groin, at the level of the femoral canal. Thus, the swelling will also be somewhat lower in the groin. A femoral hernia is much more common in women than in men. The basic principle of inguinal or femoral hernia surgery in an adult is the placement of a synthetic mesh over the weakening with sufficient overlap somewhat like using a piece of fabric to repair a tear in the pants at the knee. We use either a stiffer mesh, thus slightly less flexible, shown here on the left, or a mesh with larger pores, which is slightly more flexible, shown here on the right. The mesh can be placed in two different panes, superficial or deep in the groin. If we want to place the mesh superficially in the groin, we call this a repair according to Liechtenstein. In this procedure, first the most superficial muscle in the groin, and therefore also outer opening of the inguinal canal, is opened. After freeing and pushing back the hernia sac, the mesh is placed under the spermatic cord. Towards the side, an opening must then be made in the mesh at the inner opening of the inguinal canal, in order to allow the spermatic cord to pass through. Therefore, we make two flaps in the mesh that are then placed on top of each other. The mesh is fixated in several places. Since the inguinal nerves run very close here, great care must be taken to preserve them as much as possible. Also, this surgical technique is not adequate to repair a femoral hernia. Our first choice is therefore to place the mesh deep in the groin. This can be done with keyhole surgery. The mesh then lies just in front of the peritoneum, but not in the abdominal cavity. 
Here there is no need to make an opening in the mesh because no structures need to pass through it. In addition, there is a slightly lower risk of chronic penis complication because there is a lower chance of irritation of the inguinal nerves and because the mesh usually does not need to be fixated or only very limited. This type of surgery is adequate for repairing an inguinal hernia as well as a femoral hernia.